Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Tribble, and today I'm presenting with Madison Walker, Nina Ruan, and Mira Malavia on our project titled Efficacy of the Incorporation of Simulation-Based Learning into the Curriculum at the University of Missouri-Kansas City School of Medicine. This project stemmed from us looking at the current landscape of simulation technology and how it has flourished in the past couple years with us becoming more reliant on technology as a means of education. Because of these factors, we thought now was the time to implement some of this technology into our curriculum to replace usual didactic lecture-based learning. In this project, we advocated that the Council on Curriculum change the usual didactic learning on the lumbar puncture procedure to a more interactive simulation-based learning procedure where a physician demos the procedure. Our goal of this study was to test the student's reception to this new method of learning. So for the methodology, we did a lumbar puncture simulation and gave detailed instructions to the presenter and the learners. The supplies we used were an LP simulator, CAE technology, theaters at both the KC and St. Joseph medical campuses, and then Zoom video conferencing software. And because of COVID, we ran the simulation over Zoom. And so what we did was we gave a short lecture over spinal cord anatomy and the lumbar puncture procedure prior to running the simulation. And then pre-simulation and post-simulation evals were given to assess learners' objective knowledge and confidence of an LP procedure via a quiz with like knowledge scores and then confidence scores. And then we took the, the pre and post-evaluations, linked them together using a unique identifier to keep student identity anonymous. We collected all the data from 94 learners and ran a paired sample t-test on them and student feedback was evaluated on quiz scores, confidence scores, attitude towards the simulation, recommendations to continue or not, and a qualitative score. And the learners who didn't finish both surveys were not used in the project. In total, we had 94 students who completed both pre and post questionnaire. Our results were organized into three categories, knowledge, confidence, and attitude. The knowledge score consisted of content-based questions like, what is the correct technique to administer lidocaine for the lumbar puncture procedure, and was scored out of four, the average pre-test score being 2.48, and after the simulation, the average score was 3.09. Jumping down to the bottom graph, we show the percentage increase specifically for the four knowledge questions. And you can see for question three and four, there was 24% and 31% increase respectively in percentage of students who got these quest content questions correct. The other two categories of scores were confidence and attitude scores, where students subjectively ranked how confident they felt before and after the simulation and understanding the critical steps of the procedure, as well as ranking attitude towards simulation-based learning. The confidence score was measured out of 15 and the attitude score out of 10. A paired t-test was used to analyze results and displayed in the middle table and shows that for all three categories of scores, there was statistically significant less than point. 0.5 p-score increase in knowledge, confidence, and attitude of students after the simulation. Yeah, so piggybacking off what Madison was saying, there was a significant increase in students' knowledge and confidence with the lumbar puncture procedure and the overall attitude towards simulation following our simulation. And so in reference to students' knowledge about lumbar punctures, we could see that after the simulation, there was a T-score of negative 7.274 and a P-value of less than 0.05. And in terms of their confidence in performing the procedure, it was also significantly increased with um, a T-score of negative 6.673 and a P-value of less than 0.05. Additionally, 97% um, Almost all students recommended the usage of simulation-based experiences in future learning. And so overall, these re results basically demonstrate the efficacy of the lumbar puncture simulation at the UMKC School of Medicine, both in teaching students and increasing confidence. Um, this encourages the further application of simulation into our School of Medicine curriculum. Um, however, we do have to take note that due to the lack of data directly comparing the efficacy of simulation-based learning to lecture-based learning, this study can't per se confirm improved learning with simulation, and we still need to do more future studies. However, it holds a very promising future. In conclusion, our study showed that simulation-based learning shows statistically significant increase in the knowledge and confidence of learners. What is even more striking is that nearly 97% of learners recommended future simulation-based experiences. Future studies should directly compare simulation learning to lecture-based learning. Thank you for your time.